good y'all welcome back to the channel welcome back to another video i am really excited for today's video because i'm going to be doing a true crime video but mm, we're gonna be putting a little twist onto the true crime okay i got this idea from tiktok as i usually do but basically you guys the other day i was scrolling through tiktok and i came across this video of charles manson just kind of talking crap on Ted Bundy. Bundy, Bundy's a rumpkin. Bundy's a poop butt. Bundy's his mama's boy. Bundy's out there trying to prove something to his own manhood. That's got nothing to do with me. I don't roll around with poop people like that. I stand with people that can stand with themselves. Well, this got me thinking, okay, like, who is the best serial killer out of the two? Is it Mr. Charles or is it Mr. Ted? You know what I fucking mean? In today's video, we are going to be diving in into both of these serial killer careers and seeing who was actually the best serial killer, okay? Before I start, I do want to mention that I know that like what these men did was like, it's not funny, you know what I mean? But it's just something different to add to the mix of true crime because there are just so many true crime videos on the internet and you know, instead of doing the typical just facts on facts on facts, I thought this would be a really fun idea and just something different to do, okay? And of course, if you guys have any recommendations as to what serial killers to put up against next, definitely let me know down below because yeah, I had fun, okay, putting this shit together. So let's go ahead and start, you guys. Charles Manson. Can we have a round of applause for the first opponent? <laughs> Charles Manson was born on November 12th in 1934, which actually makes him a Scorpio. So point for that because um, Scorpios are just all superior, okay? And I may be a little biased just because I myself am a Scorpio, but points for that. <laughs> Manson's mother was actually a single mother and during this era it was very frowned upon and looked down upon to have children out of wedlock which basically means like have children before you're married okay and this was what happened to Charles's mother. Now I really think this set the tone for Charles's life he didn't have a father figure in his life and the only person that he knew was his mother and unfortunately his mother was incarcerated when he was little and actually in one of the interviews that I saw with Charles Manson he talked about how he used to go visit her while she was locked up and honestly I can't imagine what that would do to a little kid you know what I mean like seeing the person that birthed you and that's supposed to be there to protect you and be there no matter what just behind bars or behind glass or whatever the case is. Charles's childhood, you guys, was a little mm, rocky to say the fucking least, okay? He actually ended up setting his school on fire, you guys, when he was nine years old. And this is what started his removal from schools and his placement in like all boys schools and just like boarding schools and reform schools and stuff like that. After Charles got sent to reform school, his mother really did not want anything to do with him and she actually wanted to put him up for like foster care, but they denied her that and so she just kind of gave him to the state of Ohio and was like, mm, yeah, figure it out. And so now, you know, he was in the state of Ohio's hands and so what they decided to do with him was actually put him in an all boys school. And because of this, you guys, he was constantly in and out of foster care facilities and in and out of juvie. Early on, he just really started a life of just like petty crimes. From 1951 to about 1967, you guys, this whole time, he was just catching case after case after case after case. Some of the things that he was doing, you guys, was like pimping out women, like armed burglary, and actually he spent a total of like almost 10 years, I believe it was like seven years, in prison for trying to cash a like $42 check, you guys. I think the world kind of knew what was in store if you know he was out and about but he really was catching a lot of jail time for just these petty crimes it was during his stay at a prison where he actually met an og gangster from the great depression era and that man actually taught him how to play the guitar and manson you guys fell in love with the music and the guitar and everything that had to do with that 
a lot of people say that Charles Manson, you guys, had a great mind, had a very, very unique way of just viewing life and just a very unique way of being. He was definitely the type of person that you just wanted around when you were not having a good time. He really was like that person that you needed when you were in trouble, you know what I mean? He really was able to mold himself and just connect with you on a whole different level and just made you feel like, you know, everything was going to be okay. Like he was there for you. Like he really, really genuinely cared. After being released from prison, you guys, he actually started building a following, okay? And because he didn't have a family growing up and his mom, like I said, just kind of abandoned him to the state of Ohio, what he really, really lacked was family and bonding and just that little close knit, you know, group of people in his life. He started to like round up all these people, right? And these were people that were like, they were oddballs, okay? They were runaway. Some of them had addictions and stuff like that. This mainly consisted of women. Um, there was a few boys here and there, but it was mainly women. And they really believed what he was speaking to them and what he was telling them. After he started growing his, you know, family is what he would call them, um, he kind of kept them moving all around the country. And this is what kind of kept them entertained and just like in his almost like a trance, you know what I mean? Because he was always moving, always doing something new, just speaking out like his thoughts and like what he thought of the world and about people. Because during this time, LSD, AKA acid, which is a hallucinogen, was very big during this time. It was like the peak era of acid and he was a little weird, okay? He would give them all acid and be like, oh, like, let's all take a trip together. The witnesses actually came forward and said that they never really saw him taking any acid. Um, they kind of all just took it and just assumed that he had as well. And what's really crazy, you guys, is acid does some shit to you guys that is just boom it's out of this world you guys it's so mind fucking okay and when you're on acid everything is just so much more like heightened and so much more like i don't know colors are just more vibrant sounds are louder like things just hit you harder and like i said it is a hallucinant drug so when you mix that with like a serial killer a person that has a very big mind in a very different way of just viewing the world um almost like a mind control type of thing one of the weird things that he would do with these people on acid you guys was like recreate the crucifixion so just imagine this you guys okay you got a group of a bunch of women and boys that were you know troubled and had a lot of issues give them acid and while they're tripping balls, you're just recreating the crucifixion. And while he was doing that, he would say things like, I would die for you, would you die for me? Which kind of leads me to believe that he kind of wanted them to view him as like a god almost, like like a, like a higher power type of shit, you know what I mean? So that's just insane. Points for giving them acid because <laughs> um, although that's not very nice and it's kind of a little mind fucking um at least they were tripping and having fun <laughs> during this whole time you guys racism was big it's always been very big it's something that has never truly ever gone away you know what i mean unfortunately but during this time it was just insane you guys and because of what was going on around the world manson really thought there was going to be a war a racism war he decided to take things into his own hands, you guys, and he actually was responsible for eight deaths, which included, at the time, some of the biggest stars and um, their wives and just, like, people around them and stuff. However, you guys, he was not physically responsible for them, as in, like, he didn't get his hands dirty. He was able to get a few people from his family to do his bidding basically and like i said because they were all like kind of tripping on acid and they really viewed him as like a god in a sense they were doing anything he told them to do now while these murders were being taken care of by his family members he actually carved an x you guys into his forehead to represent his removal from society so to me that was him 
giving society the fucking middle finger, okay? Although, you know, it wasn't for the right reasons, points for that. If you're gonna do something, leave something witchy. Just like I would tell you, if you're gonna do something, do it well and leave something witchy. Leave a sign to let the world know that you were there. Have a good day. Now at this point, you guys, he had already been responsible for the murders and police were investigating the crimes and stuff like that, trying to figure out who was responsible for the crime. One of the guns that was used to kill some of the victims was found by a 10 year old little boy who actually ended up giving the gun to his father. His father gave the gun to the police and the police didn't do a very good job of looking into the gun. They kind of just disregarded the whole situation with it and just kind of continued on. They didn't really think it had anything to do with the murders that had just taken place. Um, but if they would have done their research, they would have realized that it had a lot to do with what was going on. I all, all this was taking place, you guys, Charles and his family were committing petty crimes. The police were able to get a warrant for where the cult, if you will, was staying and they were able to raid the place and arrest them all for Grand Theft Auto. However, you guys, they got released a few hours later because the warrant was dated wrong. The police were really slipping on this one, okay? I'm not gonna lie, they're, they were really slacking on this. Points for Manson for getting away with that. During this whole situation where they were arrested, a lot of them were questioned and a few of them actually ended up snitching on Manson and letting the police know what he had been doing and that he was in a sense responsible for all the murders that had just taken place. Since some of his family members actually snitched on him, police were very quick to go and arrest him, you guys, and take him to trial. And what's crazy, you guys, is that President Richard Nixon was actually the one in office during this whole time, and he went on like live television and spoke about Charles Manson and just mm, what like a cruel and foul person he was. But Charles didn't really see it like this. Uh, Charles actually saw it as him being praised and just loved it, you guys. He absolutely loved the attention that he was getting, even though it was negative. There's a man who was guilty, uh, directly or indirectly, of eight murders without reason. Uh, here's a man yet who, as far as the coverage was concerned, uh, appeared to be rather a glamorous figure. In trial for the crimes that he had committed, well, that he was responsible for, he actually lunged, you guys, 10 feet at the judge. So he really was trying to like do some shit to the judge. However, he was restrained quickly and, you know, put in his place. But that's just um, a savage move. Like you're already going to jail, like might as well finish off with a bang, you know? So. <laughs> points for that they did not let manson represent himself as his lawyer that's originally what he wanted to do and they denied him that they were like uh no so they ended up you know assigning him a lawyer as you do and what's crazy you guys is that the lawyer that was appointed to manson ended up being found dead um shortly after he kind of disagreed with manson's beliefs and what he stood for and he kind of didn't really want to defend him, you know what I'm saying? So he was found dead. Um, nobody ever found out what happened to him or like what caused it, but I, I don't know, man. I have a hunch, okay? Like I said, go out with a bang. The jury found the family members all guilty of first degree murder as well as conspiracy to commit murder. Charles's right hand man was actually sentenced to death. And as far as Charles Manson goes, you guys, he was sentenced to life in prison without possibility of parole. And actually, you guys, Manson did die in 2017, which was very recent, from cardiac arrest uh, due to respiratory failure because of colon cancer. Charles Manson has a few points um, in his corner, but now let's talk about Mr. Ted Bundy, okay? Now this one. Grab your bloods, okay? Because this one, he... Oh 
my god, let's just get into it, okay? Mr. Bundy, you guys, was born on November 24th in 1946. So this actually makes him a Sagittarius, which um, he not getting no points for that because, like I said, Scorpios are all superior. So no points, Bundy, sorry. <laughs> but it's kind of creepy that they were actually born in the same month, only a few days apart. So um, that's something that they do have in common. Like Charles Manson, uh, Ted Bundy's mother was also a single mother. She also had him out of wedlock, which, like I said, just basically means that she wasn't married when she had Ted and this caused a lot a lot of problems you guys from a very very early age with Ted. His mother actually ended up giving him to her parents so Bundy's grandparents and they raised him as his own so the whole time he was growing up you guys he thought his grandparents were his parents. He thought his mom was actually his sister you guys so just imagine you're living in a lie basically ted came off as very smart very very brilliant very charismatic just an amazing an amazing guy okay the whole time he was going to school he was really great in school he really didn't have any like problems and stuff like charles did growing up like he didn't set none on fire or anything he wasn't getting sent to like reform schools or like all boys schools or anything like that he was a really good kid didn't really have any problems with the law like everything was fine and dandy but he ends up finishing school and going on to college you guys where he actually met the woman of his dreams her name was stephanie okay and everything seemed to be going just fine and dandy in their relationship however you guys out of kind of nowhere stephanie decides to leave ted and break up with him and she says that her reasoning is because he just wasn't ambitious enough for her. He didn't really seem like he was after anything or like he wanted to kind of like elevate in life. He was just kind of staying in the same spot, wasn't really working towards anything and she wanted more. Shortly after Stephanie decided to leave Ted, he actually ended up dropping out of college and moving back to his hometown in Washington. After moving back home, you guys, this is where Ted finally finds out the truth with his family and just all the lies that he had been told his whole life. Everything came out, you guys, and he found out, you know, his sister was his mom, his parents were actually his grandparents. I feel like this really hit Ted hard, you guys, because the woman that birthed him, the woman that is supposed to be there for him through thick and thin and is supposed to take care of him and love him and just be his everything gave him up and lied about it his whole entire life you guys and he found out when he was pretty grown okay like he had dropped out of college so he was definitely a little older when he found out all of this was a lie so just imagine how he must have felt you know what i mean he basically said screw this i'm leaving and ended up enrolling in law school you guys shortly after you know everything had come out about his family He's back in school, okay? He's going to law school. He's, you know, trying to overcome everything that he just learned about his family when he meets a young girl by the name of Elizabeth, okay? Elizabeth, you guys, was what kind of Ted needed at the time in the sense of he just needed a woman. The woman that, you know, was supposed to be there to protect him and love him through thick and thin. Uh, had lied to him so he was just kind of looking for a woman to be that for him and Elizabeth was providing that for him uh, she you know was giving him a place to stay and was cooking for him and you know of course was giving him sex and stuff like that so he didn't really mm, like love her and I honestly don't think that he could love a woman especially after you know what he just learned but I definitely feel like he was using Elizabeth. Everything seems to be going fine and dandy, okay? He's in law school, everything's going great. He's dating Elizabeth. Elizabeth is providing him with, you know, what he needs at the time. And he starts working at a suicide hotline. And like, I'm not trying to like make this a joke or anything, but imagine calling a suicide hotline and like Ted Bundy answers you. But at the time, nobody knew what he was going to be capable of. But like, imagine now. <laughs> like, I don't want him to answer my phone call. Hell no. 
everything's going great for Ted, right? He's working at the suicide hotline, he's dating Elizabeth, their relationship seems to be going great, law school is going great as well, and people were just looking at Ted and amazed. Like, he was such an amazing person, okay? And Ted really, really liked this is something very similar that he had with Charles. They both really kind of liked to be praised and to be looked at as just like, oh, like almighty and powerful, you know what I mean? So Ted was eating this attention up. With all this great attention that he was getting, uh, he actually caught the attention of his long lost love, Stephanie. Okay, Stephanie realizes that, oh shit, He's working at a suicide hotline, making, you know, people feel better and stuff like that. He's going to school, he's being a lawyer, and she starts to notice, you know, he's, okay, he's a little bit more ambitious now. He has more goals, more pizzazz to him, if you will, okay? He's just going out and doing what he wants to do, and she really, really dig that. Okay, Stephanie and Ted actually start to date again, and very shortly after, they get engaged. And all this, okay, is happening while Ted is still fucking with the other girl, okay, with Elizabeth, okay, so he a player. Ted was a petty motherfucker and he never forgot that Stephanie left him that first time when he was head over heels in love with her, okay? So he waited till Stephanie was head over heels excited about the wedding and was like already planning it and was really, really looking forward to it and he just dipped on her. Okay, he just left her. He literally said, never mind, we ain't getting married, and dipped. Okay, he did exactly what she had done to him the first time, but I feel like he did it better. Um, points for Ted for that, okay? Because that's just some petty shit right there, okay? After he ends his engagement with Stephanie, you guys, is where everything kind of took a really dark turn, okay? First thing he did was drop out of law school, okay? And move back to Washington. And in 1974, you guys, his killings started, okay? The way he was able to, you know, find and abduct so many women, you guys, was actually, he would drive around in his little Volkswagen Beetle. He was very brilliant, very smart, very charismatic, and he didn't look like, you know, your average serial killer. He didn't look crazy or anything. He was actually very handsome, and, you know, the chicks loved him, like I said. And so it was very easy for him to just approach women because, I mean, they saw him and they was like, ooh, no, mm -hmm. When in reality, he was trying to do something much, much worse than take them on a bad date. So from 1974, you guys, to 1978, not only did it rape his victims, but also kill them as well. And there isn't like an exact number of victims because they were never all found but it is believed that he did rape and kill more than 30 women he would actually do some weird ass things to his victims like he would wash their hair or even paint their nails but something else that i found to be very just like it, it, it just it just made me uneasy you guys was that he liked to keep souvenirs from his killings okay so he would keep i don't know like a limb so like an arm or like a finger like pieces of their hair and stuff like that as like a memory to remember the victim which is just, what the fuck like you already killed her you know what i mean like you really gotta do that too during this whole time you guys while he's killing these women and raping them He's still dating Elizabeth. At this point, a lot of the victims had actually come forward and, you know, reported the assault and stuff like that. And police were able to make a sketch out of the witnesses' statements and they released it to the public. When Elizabeth saw the sketch that was released to the public, you guys, she immediately called the police and gave them Ted's information and basically you know, gave them his full name and told them that he drove the Volkswagen Beetle that, you know, had been seen around town, um, you know, trying to abduct women and stuff like that. She gave the police all the information that they needed. However, you guys, they didn't look into Ted because he didn't fit the serial killer role, okay? He didn't look like a serial killer, so they just dismissed the whole tip. Okay, so points for Ted. 
because of his looks, he was able to get away with it, you guys, which just, that's just insane to me, okay? Like, I always say this, you guys, never judge a fucking book by its cover, okay? Fast forward a little bit, you guys, and Ted is in Utah, okay? And he's driving around trying to find his next victim when one of the policemen pulls him over because, you know, he saw the little beetle that everybody was looking for, okay? And when Ted gets pulled over, you guys, the policeman notices that Ted's passenger seat is missing. And in place of the passenger seat is a ski mask, a crowbar, and an ice pick. Ted was able to charm his way out of the traffic stop, okay? Like I said, he didn't look the part. He did not look like a serial killer. He didn't look like somebody that would cause harm. So the policeman ended up letting him go. At this point, you guys, Ted is starting to get a little paranoid, to say the fucking least, okay? So what he decided to do was sell the car, the Volkswagen, okay? And because he sold the Volkswagen, um, police were able to go through the car and this is where they found a lot of evidence to lead them to believe that Ted had something to do with the murders. For example, they were able to find some of the victim's hair in the car. Police were able to locate Ted and arrest him in Utah and bring him in for a lineup. And during the lineup, you guys, one of the victims was actually able to identify Ted right away. So they arrest Ted and they take him to trial, you guys. However, there was not enough hardcore concrete evidence to pin all the murders against Ted. So he was only sentenced to 1 to 15 years for the abduction of his victims. Now, unlike Mr. Manson, Ted was actually given permission to represent himself in court, okay? So he was going to be his own lawyer. Now, because he was going to be his own lawyer, he was able to get access to the jail's library. So, you know, he could go study up on his laws and prepare himself for his court case, right? However, during one of the visits where he went to the library, you guys, he noticed that, you know, there was a window where he could sneak out of and that's exactly what he did. Now, it didn't take the police very long to find him again. I believe it was only like six days that it took them to be able to arrest him again and bring him back to jail. Now, it was this time in jail, you guys, where he noticed that there was like a hole on the ceiling of his cell, right? So what did Mr. Ted do? He climbed through the hole, you guys, somehow managed to like get out of there through the ceiling and what was on top of his cell was the chief jailer's like apartment like where he was staying at so ted just walked out the front door <laughs> this motherfucker was smart enough to figure out how not only to escape but to do it like a savage okay so points for that one ted has just escaped through the front door of the chief jailer's apartment okay and he's out into the world and what does Ted do first? He finds a victim. He was just going from victim to victim to victim, okay? Scoping out these women, breaking into their homes, and beating them, raping them, killing them. After he was finally caught and arrested um, this third time, his partner Elizabeth finally ended up leaving Ted. Um, I can't believe it took her that long, but you know, she did. She made a move and she left him. One of the weird things, you guys, that police were able to notice from the victims is that they all kind of had what seemed to be bite marks, okay? And they kind of came to the conclusion that Ted would actually bite his victims as a way of kind of leaving a signature, okay? As to kind of say, I did this, you know what I'm saying? In order for police to be able to pin all the cases against Ted, they needed some hardcore evidence to be able to prove that Ted was responsible for this. So the police ended up getting a warrant for Ted's mouth, you guys. And this was after a lot of failed attempts to get his bite impressions. They tried doing this with like fruit and food and stuff like that, but he was very smart. So he caught onto that very quickly and did not want to eat anything that the police were giving him. This is when the police were able to get a warrant for his mouth, you guys. Isn't that fucking insane? I have never heard that shit before, like getting a warrant for your mouth, like what the fuck? <laughs> they took him to a dentist where they were able to get a perfect sample of his bite impressions. 
and of course they compared them to the bite marks that were left on the victims and it all matched up. And in July of 1974, you guys, Ted was convicted of two counts of first degree murder and three counts of attempted murder. And he was actually given the death sentence not once, but twice. The advisory sentence rendered by the jury does hereby impose the death penalty upon the defendant, Theodore Robert Bundy. Bundy. Then, Take care of yourself, young man. Thank you. I, I say that to you sincerely. Take care of yourself. It's a tragedy for this court to see it's such a total waste, I think, of humanity that I've experienced in this court. You're a bright young man. You made a good lawyer. I'd love to have you practice in front of me, but you went another way, partner. Ted was actually representing himself um, during this whole trial and stuff, and the state, you guys, actually spent over $9 million in like resources and stuff like that for Ted so that he could represent himself. So points for that because he just scammed the state of Washington out of <laughs> a shit ton of money. What Ted wanted to do was to get out of the death sentence. He did not want that and was trying to do everything in his power to find a way, some type of loophole out of that. At the last trial that he had you guys where he got sentenced, there was actually a woman there named Carol, okay? And Carol was in love with Ted, okay, to say the fucking least. And she actually claimed that she had had a baby from Ted. So Ted was a father is what she claimed. And she loved him, you guys. And he actually proposed to her at his trial while he was getting sentenced for killing, raping, all these women. I guess players gotta play. <laughs> and over the course of 10 years, you guys, while he was on death row, he actually confessed to over 30 murders, you guys, but they were never really able to like find their bodies or to find the evidence that they needed to convict him of those murders. And as he was walking, you guys, to get executed, he was shouting out like the names of these random girls okay i guess to like buy him more time because like i said he really did not want to get the death sentence but like i said they couldn't find you know evidence to support what he was saying so they didn't know if he was just saying all these things to buy himself more time or, or if he was actually confessing you know some real shit here so on january 24th of 1989 you guys he was executed by electric chair now, before I give the final verdict as to who I think is the best serial killer, I just want to say, you guys, that both Ted and Charles had quite a few things in common, okay? Um, like, for example, the fact that Charles never really took responsibility for what he did, okay? And neither did Ted. But the way that they did it was a little bit differently, okay? Charles basically was just kind of like, nah like i never forced anybody to do anything that they didn't want to like they only did what they wanted to do like i never got inside their heads or anything like that you do what you feel is right you do what you think is right now whatever you think is right it's got to be right all i'm doing is i'm walking with the, i'm walking with you i'm walking in line with you and i'm holding the line with you what you do is up to you it's got nothing to do with me ted also never really took responsibility for what he did like i said um but the way he did it was just kind of like like i said he was charming so he really made you you know kind of feel bad for him in a sense and kind of just second doubt yourself as to like did this man really do that you know what i mean like is he really responsible for all this or like are we all just tripping okay Sorry. That doesn't occur a good thing, but I'm sorry. Not for me. I mean, I'm sorry. Well, by you saying that it goes a long way, Ted. I'm not looking for anything. I know. I don't understand. I understand now a lot of stuff. The 
senselessness, the senselessness of it, is, it, 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 it appalls me, although I'm sure not as much as those who are so close to it. It's just crazy that their minds were kind of thinking alike, but in a different way, if that makes any fucking sense. I don't, I don't know if that does, but that's the way I see it. Like, they had a very similar, like, mindset like views but the way of them doing stuff was just different now you guys are gonna have to let me know down below in the comments who you guys think the winner of this round is but i'm gonna have to give it to mr ted bundy simply because charles never really got his hands dirty okay and ted did ted took care of everything himself okay while i think charles was right um in you know saying that ted had something to prove to his manhood i believe both of them had a lot of like um like mommy issues if you will it's just funny that charles would say that about ted when he had a lot of issues too with women so <laughs> that's just really funny to me but let's give a round of applause to mr ted <laughs> Motherfucker is like happy as shit in his grave right now because we're pregnant his ass. That's actually going to be it for today's video. I actually had a lot of fun, you guys, putting these two against each other and seeing who is the best serial killer. Okay, like I said, let me know down below if you guys think that uh, Charles is the better serial killer. But personally, I think Mr. Ted Bundy here takes first place for that. Okay. I hope you guys have an amazing rest of your day, a dope ass rest of your week, okay? Don't forget to smile, drink your water, eat your veggies, smoke your weed, and don't forget you guys, do not judge a book by its fucking cover because you just never know what's underneath all that prettiness, okay? I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye guys. Every one of you out there has tried to kill me for the last, for the last 25 years and I'm still here. Ha ha ha, now what?